In this video, we're going to talk about carbanion stability. But before we do that, let's discuss carbocation stability. Now remember, a carbocation is basically a carbon with a positive charge. Here we have a tertiary carbocation. The reason why it's tertiary is because the carbocation, that is the carbon with the positive charge, is attached to three other carbon atoms. This carbon here is a secondary carbocation because, as you can see, it's attached to two other carbon atoms. Now, tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary or primary carbocations. And there's two reasons for this the hyperconjugation effect and the inductive effect. So make sure you understand that. Tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations, which are more stable than primary, and methyl carbocations are the least stable out of this group. Now the methyl group is an electron donated group. It can donate electrons or basically electron density, you could say, to the carbocation, thus stabilizing it. And when it does so through the sigma bond, this is known as the inductive effect. Another way in which a carbocation can be stabilized is by the orbital overlap between a nearby CH bond. And this is due to the hyperconjugation effect. So by those two means, methyl groups can stabilize a carbocation. So because methyl groups are electron donating groups, they stabilize the carbocations. And so tertiary carbocations, the ones that contain more methyl groups, are more stable than secondary and primary carbocations. Now the situation is different for carbanides. It's actually reverse. An electron donating group can stabilize a carbocation because the carbocation wants electrons. It needs electrons to stabilize itself. A carbanion has a negative charge. It doesn't want electrons. That's going to make it less stable. So for carbanions, the methyl carbanion, this is a carbon with a lone pair and a negative charge, this is more stable than a primary carbanion and that is more stable than a secondary carbanion and then finally the tertiary carbanion is the least stable in this group So remember, tertiary carbocations are the most stable in the group, but methyl carbanions are more stable than tertiary carbanions. Now let's say if you were to have a structure that looks like this. And let's compare that with another carbanion that looks like this. Which of these two carbanions is more stable? The one on top or the one on the bottom? Now, both carbanions are secondary carbanions. So we can't really use the trend that we discussed earlier. However, this is a secondary allylic carbanion. And as a result, it's going to be more stable due to resonance. The negative charge can be delocalized on two carbon atoms as opposed to one. And so whenever you can spread a charge over multiple atoms, the situation is more stable than localizing a charge on one atom. So let's draw the resonance structure. We can take a lone pair, move it here to form a pi bond, and then we can take the two electrons in this pi bond 
and push it on that carbon, making moving the carbon on. So the resonance structure looks like this. The negative charge basically jumped two carbons to the left, and now the double bond uh, switched places with where the carbon ion was. And so having the negative charge shared over two carbon atoms results in a more stable situation than localizing the negative charge on just one carbon atom. So whenever you're dealing with carbon ions, if there's one that has a resonance structure, typically that one is usually the more stable carbon ion structure. So that's it for carbon ion stability. Hopefully it'll help you with any organic chemistry exams that you have coming up. Thanks for watching.